Pepsi-Cola, P-E-P-S-I. That's your smartest cola buy. Pepsi-Cola presents Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Washington calling David Harding, Counter Spy. Harding, Counter Spy. Calling Washington. United States Counter Spy. Especially appointed to investigate and combat the enemies of our country, both at home and abroad. Tonight, the case of the vicious visitor. Another counter spy report to the American people. Brought to you each Tuesday and Thursday by Pepsi Cola. Pepsi Cola hits the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. That's right, you heard what they said. Two full glasses of sparkling Pepsi from one big 12 ounce bottle. You're getting an extra glass full. And what a delicious glass full. The most refreshing, delightful cola that ever tickled your taste. You can't top Pepsi's tangy flavor. And that big, big bottle saves you money, goes twice as far. Pepsi is America's big, big favorite and America's biggest cola value. So why take less when Pepsi's best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? And now, to Counter Spy. A penitentiary, its high, thick walls looming black in the darkness. Inside, a sudden flood of searchlights illuminates every corner. Gates clang shut. And a siren wails frighteningly into the night. Attention. Attention all posts. Special alert. Block all exits. This is Warden Dean. Prisoner 196523, Rocky Gaines. Escaped from prison workshop three minutes ago. Block all exits. And be careful. Gaines is armed. He's a psychotic murderer and will shoot to kill. Rocky? Yeah, I'll admit it. You got the clothes? Yeah, in the car. All right. I can change on the way. The yeah. hounds are getting closer. Come on, let's get going. Oh, I'm fagged out, Al. Where's that car? Right where I said it'd be, Rocky. Yeah? The road cuts through this swamp just a few feet ahead. The clothes are getting closer, Rocky. I got this far, Al. I'll get the rest of the way. I hope. There's the car. That is in the back seat. You can change it. Uh, what? Rocky, I'm hit. Uh, a couple of oh. shots might hold him off a minute. Oh. Al, come on, get in the back. I Quick. Can't move. Slug. All right, come on, I'll help you in. Oh, come on. Uh. Give up. Rocky, you ain't got a chance. Give up. No chance, huh? I got this far. You watch me get the rest of the way. To David Harding, Chief United States Counter Spies, Washington. From Warden Deems, Alderlander Federal Penitentiary, Maxton City. Rocky Gaines, serving time here for armed bank robbery, made successful break 5 p.m. this date. After gun battle with prison search squad in nearby swamp, Gaines and unidentified companion made getaway in black Buick sedan. Rocky, where you driving it? We gotta ditch this car, Al. These woods are as good a spot as any. Rocky, them bumps! Every time you hit a bump, it kills me. 
I'm all shot up. Oh, they got more than one would do. You don't hear me yapping, do you? It hurts, Rocky. I just it hurts yeah. bad. Oh. Okay, we'll leave the Stilampi here. Come on, Al. Get out of that back seat. I can't. Out, I said. We gotta keep moving. Yeah, Rocky, I swear. It's down to my legs. I can't move. Rocky, I'll wait here for you. What do you mean, wait? You gotta get me a doc, Rocky. Please. Rocky, if that's the only one that can help oh, me. Oh, sure, sure. Doc, I'll say, come with me and help my pal. He got shot helping me break out of the pen. Sure, you come running. You gotta do something. I can't take it. It's like a fire inside of me. You're my pal. You gotta do something. Okay, Al, I'll, I'll do something for you. Rocky, that's good. What's the idea? I told you I'd do something, didn't I? This will put you out of your misery. Rocky, don't. You're gonna die anyway. I'm doing you a Rocky, favor. Don't pull that trigger. Come so along, Al. Wait, See wait. you around. Rocky, up. Washington to Conway, Albany. Identification reports that fingerprints of the dead man are those of Alvin Troy, alias Al Trojan, formerly a sidekick of Rocky Gaines. We're working on blood samples you forwarded in the laboratory. How's it coming, Dr. Love? Well, I finished the blood test, Mr. Harding. And? I'll have a look. Now, this microscope first. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a specimen of the blood we found in the rear seat of the getaway car. Type O. The dead man, Al Trojan, had type O. Yes, sir. Now, look at the specimen under this other microscope. See, that's a smear we got from the front seat of the car. That's different. (laughs) It certainly is. Type B blood. Which means that the man driving the getaway car was Rocky Gaines. And he must have been wounded by the prison guards, too. Undoubtedly. Well, Dr. Lawton, when the other reports are completed, let me know. Uh I'll be back in my office with Harry Peters. And the lab test Peters proved that the blood stains on the front and rear seats of the car were of different types. Now, what did ballistics dig up about the bullets in Trojan's body? Something even more interesting, Dave. Of the five slugs probed out of Al Trojan's body, only two were thirty caliber. The other three were forty fives. What? Yes, sir. And the prison guards used thirty caliber rifles. And we know that Rocky Gaines was armed with a revolver, undoubtedly a forty five. Nice boy, Rocky Gaines. This means he murdered his own partner. Rocky must have figured that Al Trojan wounded was a dead weight on his hands. And dead men tell no tales, especially to the police. Well, from all we know about Gaines, this doesn't surprise me, Peter. According to the prison report, Gaines is a psychotic, triggered finger type, a purely emotionless killer without normal human conscience. Special coming in on the radio, Dave. Harding, go ahead. Conway, Mr. Harding. I'm in Tannersville. I got a lead on Rocky Gaines. Let's have it. Less than an hour ago, a motorist picked up a hitchhiker on a back road 20 miles from here. And then at gunpoint, the driver was forced out of his car and left high and dry. The driver identifies the hitchhiker as Rocky Gaines? Positively. What direction did he drive off? North. All right, Conway. From now on, we'll use Tannersville as the focal point of our operations. Set up an emergency base for us there. Right, Chief. Why Tannersville, Dave? Look at this map, Peters. Here's Tannersville. The last large town this side of those mountains. Now, you heard Conway. Rocky was driving north. Which means he's probably headed into the mountains, hmm? Right. Now, with the local police, we'll set up blocks at every intersection of those mountain roads. Rocky may get into those mountains, but he has at least one bullet wound. Sooner or later, he'll have to get help up there, or come out for it. And when he does, we'll have to be close by, or some innocent people may get killed. Norm, 
Norma, this boat engine sounds kind of peculiar to me. Oh, Cliff, there isn't a thing wrong with a boat, and you know it. Well, it still sounds funny. I can't put my finger now, on the Now, darling, problem. you're just looking for another excuse to take the motor apart again. Now, isn't that it? Probably you, Mrs. Bentonage. You know too darn much about me. <laughs> well, now, imagine a husband admitting that. Hey, you're running us right into the oh, jetty. Oh, I am. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, I'll bring it in easy. Yeah. That's it. Okay, kill the motor. Huh? This is a nice landing. Thank you. <clears throat> Any specially want in town, Norma? Uh, no. I... Oh, yes, yes, Cliff. Will you stop by Jane Tompkins and ask if she heard anything about that material I ordered? Jane Tompkins material. Anything else? Not a thing. I'll be back to pick you up here at 12. All right, honey. Here at the jetty at 12. Bye. Nice boat you got there, lady. Oh. Oh, thanks. My husband takes a lot of pride in it. Looks like things turned out okay for you, Norma. What? What's the matter, Norma? Don't you remember me? An old friend like me? Take another look. Lucky day. Huh. Yeah. It's been a long time, huh, baby? How many years? Fifteen? Still don't look a day over twenty. What are you doing here? You don't look so glad to see your old friend Rocky. You and me used to get along swell in the old days, remember? Norma and Rocky? <laughs> Quite a pair. What do you want, Rocky? For old time's sake, baby, just a little favor. What kind of a favor? I happen to be in the neighborhood, and I remember hearing that after you left town, you come up here and married yourself a square. Some guy who runs duck hunting blinds out on that island on the lake. Yes, we live there, Cliff and I. I figured that island's just about the right place for me to lay low a while to a heat up. Well, what do you say, Norma, baby? For old time's sake? I'm sorry, Rocky. I got a slug in my shoulder. I need a doc to take care of it. I got a healthy wad of dough. You'll get nice room and board. No, I won't do it, Rocky. I can't. I'll, I'll just pretend that you weren't here. But I didn't see you. You pretend, huh? It's the best I can do, Rocky. The best you can do? Now, you listen to me. I'm wise to your setup, baby. Nobody around here is supposed to know what you were before you came here. You're a nice, sweet lily of the valley in these parts, Rocky, huh? I've changed. I'm different. Norma, baby. That character Cliff who got out of that boat a few minutes ago. You two looked awful happy from where I was there. Ever tell your husband about the old days, Norma? About yourself and Rocky Gaines? <laughs> no, I guess you didn't. Now, you wouldn't want to spoil everything to make Mr. Benton unhappy, would you? Of all the places in the world, why did you have to come here? Now, baby, I knew you'd come through for an old friend. Oh. Now, after you take me over to your island, you call the town doctor and tell him there was a gun accident. But, Cliff, what will I tell Cliff? Just tell your husband that an old friend named uh, Steve Evans is staying for a visit. Now, turn that motor over, baby. Let's get out to that island fast. Go ahead. This is Conway, Mr. Harding. We've just located a car stolen by Rocky Gaines. Lying at the bottom of a ravine, completely wrecked. What about Rocky? No trace of him, Chief. What's the location, Conway? Uh, just off a dirt road called Elder Lane, nine miles south of Crystal Lake. All right, Conway, we'll head that way. Better step on the seat. Right, Dave. We'll have to turn on to Route 16A for Crystal Lake. Crystal Lake. That means Rocky's still moving north. Yes. Yeah. Without a car, he's going to be slowed down. Dave, now we can start closing in on Rocky Gaines from all sides. Yes, and let's hope we get him before any innocent bystanders excite his murder-mad mind. In just a moment, we'll return to Counter Spy. Brought to you by Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi-Cola, it's the spot, two full glasses, that's a lot, lots more value, lots more zest, why take less when Pepsi's best? More and more, among fellows and girls, among mothers and dads, you hear that sane and sensible question, why take less when Pepsi is best? No budget, no allowance, ever had a better friend than tangy, sparkling Pepsi-Cola, because one big 12-ounce Pepsi bottle gives you two delicious drinks, that's twice as much tangy taste. Twice as much delicious Pepsi to go just twice as far. 
That's why more and more families say, why take less when Pepsi's best? Yes, families like yours and mine, families all over America, they're all saying, why take less when Pepsi's best? Pepsi Cola, hits the spot, tastes terrific when you're hot, more and better than the rest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? Today, tomorrow, always. Get America's biggest cola value. Take home a carton of six big, big Pepsi bottles. Insist on Pepsi at the store. And say Pepsi at the fountain. Say Pepsi at the stand. Say Pepsi. Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Why take less when Pepsi's best? Now back to Counter Spy. David Harding and his assistant, Harry Peters, looking for the escaped federal prisoner and murderer, Rocky Gaines, are now in the office of a Dr. Raymond Vincent in the town of Greendale on the shore of Crystal Lake. Dr. Vincent, this is my assistant, Harry Peters. How do you do, Mr. Peters? Dr. Vincent. Well, now, if you'll tell us the story, Doctor. Well, of course, Mr. Harding can't have any bearing on your case, but that man of yours who stopped by here was so dead set in my telling you. Well, please go ahead, Dr. Vincent. Well, it was like this. Now, yesterday morning, the phone rings. It's uh, Norma Benton, place over on Mallard Island. Mallard Island? Uh, that's a big island a few miles out in the lake. It's called Mallard on account of it's a dandy spot for duck hunters. Matter of fact, the best town spot in the state. Cliff Benton and his wife Norma, the only ones who live on Mallard, Cliff keeps the duck blinds and repair. County pays for it, you know. It brings business uh, here. Well, Doctor, what about Mrs. Benton's telephone call? Well, it seems Norma Benton's got a friend that came to visit. Uh, friend's name is... Um, uh, no, it wasn't it, uh, I have it here on a card. It... Evans, that's what it is. Steve, Steve Evans. Steve Evans. And then, Doctor? Well, it seems Norma was showing this Steve Evans fellow some of Cliff's guns. One of the darn things goes off, and this friend is shot right smack in the shoulder. You have quite a few accidents like that up here. You know, you've got to be careful with firearms. Uh, Doctor, do you have the bullet you extracted? Well, you usually do, you know. But this friend of Norma Benton's, uh, what in tarnation was his name? I'm... Well, I got it here on a card. Evans. And... Steve Evans. That's it, Evans, yeah. You've got a good memory, son. Well, this Steve Evans tells me he'd like to keep the bullet for a souvenir of his visit to Crystal Lake. Some folks are kind of funny that way, you know. I once knew a well, fellow... Well, Doctor, he... we won't take up any more huh? of your time. Thank you very much. Well, you're entirely welcome. I suppose I wasn't of much help to you, though. Well, you never can tell, Doctor. Goodbye. Goodbye, gentlemen. What do you think, Dave? I'll bet you my pension that the Benton's visitor is Rocky Gaines. Hop in, Peter. Yeah. Harding to Conway in master control car. Conway to Harding, standing by. Believe we've located Rocky Gaines on Mallard Island in Crystal Lake. Have all mobile squads in area report to me at Lake Shore Town of Greendale. That is all. The wind-up, Dave? Well, not just yet, Peter. I'm interested in Norma and Cliff Benton. Well, why should they protect and harbor a criminal? Suppose they don't know who he really is? Well, in that case, those two are in terrible danger. Rocky Gaines is a pathological killer. If we make any hasty move, he might murder them. That's true. Well, on the other hand, the doctor told us that... Steve Evans was an old friend of Mrs. Norma Benton. Peters, before we close in on Mallard Island, I want a complete checkup on Norma Benton. Then we'll know how to handle this capture. Well, dinner, Mrs. Benton. Norma's my favorite cook, Mr. Evans. Uh, you're lucky to have a wife like her. Yes, don't I know it. But Norma, dear, you, you haven't said a word all evening. Is uh, something wrong? No. You uh, you hardly ate anything, dear. I wasn't very hungry, Cliff. Oh, something on your mind, maybe, Mrs. Benton? No, there is nothing on my mind. Norma, dear, something is bothering me. Now, you, you haven't been all right for the past few days. Well, what is it, dear? I'm all right, Cliff. How many times do I have to tell you I'm perfectly all right? Now, let me alone. Norma, wait. I, I... just want to be let alone. Norma! 
Well, looks like uh, I maybe started something, Mr. Benton. No, no, it, uh, it's not your fault, Mr. Evans. Only I, I... I can't understand what's gotten into him. She, uh, she was always so happy here, you know, on the island. It's such a safe, peaceful place. Yeah, Mr. Benton. This island's about the safest place I've ever been in my life. All right, Scott. Thanks very much. Peters, you get all that on the extension? All of it, Dave. This is Norma Benton, formerly Norma Marsh, the entertainer at the Black Grotto in Bayside from 1931 to 1934. An old flame of Rocky Gaines. That undoubtedly means Mrs. Benton is giving help to Rocky. Yes, Peter. She's hiding him. Now we know how to handle this. This is Norma Benton? Yes, I'm Norma Benton. What is it? I've been waiting for you to come over here from the island. But uh, who are you? Agent Harry Peters, United States Counter Spies. Come with me, please. And that's the story, Mr. Hardy. Rocky Gaines forced himself on me. I, I had to take him. You had to? Why? Because I didn't want Cliff, that's my husband, to find out what I was once. I didn't want to hurt him. I see. Can you understand what I mean, Mr. Hardy? Well, yes, Mrs. Benton, but there are a great many people like you who make the same mistake. Once you were in a bad crowd, but at least you had the sense to get out. You have nothing to be ashamed of. Some people don't see it that way. The right people do, Mrs. Benton. And from everything I know about your husband, he's certainly one of the right people. I was crazy to help Rocky, I know. If I had come to you in the beginning, Cliff wouldn't be in such danger now. Danger? What do you mean, Mrs. Benton? Rocky warned me not to let Cliff leave the island until after he's gone. He keeps his eye on Cliff all the time. Follows him, never lets Cliff out of his sight. And Rocky always has that gun with him. He told me that if anything goes wrong, if I make just one slip, he'll kill Cliff. Hello? Hello, Mr. Harding. This is Cliff Benton. Cliff Benton, yes. Norma's not in the house now, but she told me about your talk with her. Rocky Gaines finally went to sleep. I just checked to make sure. All right. Peters and I'll start for your island right away. All right. The moorings on the south shore. Yes, I know. We should be there in less than 20 minutes. I'll be waiting for you, Mr. Hardy. You'll be waiting, huh, Benton? Gaines. I told Norma what had happened if either of you tried playing games with me. You should have left my wife alone. You... I knew her long before you did, you... Jane, don't hit me again. All you and Norma had to do was keep your trap tight till I got away. What did you have to squeal for? The counter spies found out themselves, Gaines. You're licked now. They're on their way here. And you think I'm going to sit here like one of those dumb ducks of yours, huh? Well, I can play games, too, Ben, with red-hot slugs for you and for Norma. Wait, game. Wait, yeah, don't worry, I'll wait. Till Harding gets here, and then I start. Dallard Island, just ahead, Dave. Make for the jetty on the south side, Peters. Right. Peters. What? Through the trees. That light. Mike, right in the center of the island. Over there. I see it. That's the attic light in the Benton house. Norma Benton's danger signal to us. Something must have gone haywire. Maybe Rocky tumbled to the plan. Let's get to shore. Right. I'll make it fast. Mr. Harding. Mr. Harding. Mrs. Benton, Dave. Mr. Harding, did you see the attic signal? Yes. Last I heard it from your husband. What happened? I was outside the room when Cliff called you. Rocky caught him at it, so I switched on the signal light in the attic and ran down here. We'll go right up to the house. Yes, but Mr. Harding, Rocky plans to kill us all. Cliff, me, and you. He's waiting for you to arrive. 
But if he finds out that I'm gone, he won't wait. He has Cliff in the living room. Peter, that's it. We'll have to improvise fast. Now, you circle around the house. I'll have to take a chance of going up the front way with Mrs. Benton. There's a back door to the living room, isn't there, Mrs. Benton? Yes. Okay, Peter. You come in through the back. I'll try to stall Rocky Gaines while I jockey him into position. Now, your cue to come in will be, will be this sentence. Don't be a fool, Rocky. You got it? Don't be a fool, Rocky. I'll set on it, Dave. I better get a shot, Dave. Cliff! Let me kill Cliff! Mrs. Benton, Cliff! wait! Don't go back there alone! Wait! It wasn't Cliff, thank heaven it was. Those shots, Mr. Benton. What happened? Where's Rocky Gaines? Right here, Harding. Ooh. Behind. Ooh. Get your hands up, Harding. You and Benton both. That's it. Now keep him that way. By the way, Harding, where are all your boys? I saw you come up the path alone. I came over alone, Gaines, to talk sense to you. Yeah? What kind of sense? Give yourself up, Rocky. You haven't got a chance of getting away from this place alive. <laughs> Look who's telling me about getting out alive. There are counter spies stationed all along the shore. Don't be a fool, Rocky. Fool, huh? I got out of tougher spots than this. After I set this house on fire, your Boy Scouts will all come over here on the double. That's when I make my break with the boat. I told you before, you haven't got a chance in the world. Don't be a fool, Rocky. Shut up. You're holding up this party, and at this party, Harding, you're the guest of honor. And like they say, the guest of honor should get the first helping. <laughs> Close one for you, Dave. Oh, you're telling me, Peters. What happened to you? I said the signal sentence twice, Dave. Believe it or not, those woods out back are thicker than we figured. It took me a while to get through. It's a good thing they weren't any thicker. All right, Mrs. Benton? A little shaky, but... Yes, all right. This cook is. We're both very grateful to you, Mr. Harding, for saving our lives. And our life together. Well, it cost Rocky Gaines his life. And that closes the case of your vicious visitor. When your friends drop in, be generous, but be thrifty, too. Serve plenty of delicious Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi's big 12-ounce bottle gives you not just one sparkling glass full, but two. Get a carton of six and serve 12 delicious drinks. Yes, Pepsi is America's biggest cola value. You get twice the tangy taste, twice the refreshment, twice the Pepsi. So why take less when Pepsi is best? Whenever you reach for refreshment, remember... Pepsi-Cola hits the spot. Two full glasses, that's a lot. Lots more value, lots more zest. Why take less when Pepsi's best? This is David Harding again. A special word to employers. Give work to our handicapped veterans. Next time a job opens, write to Captain Maurice Witherspoon. Masonic Veterans Committee, 71 West 23rd Street, New York City. Give our fighting men a fighting chance for rehabilitation. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station to Counter Spy. Listen next Tuesday for the exciting Counter Spy case of the sweepstake murders. When frightened witnesses could gasp only murdered by a golden sword. When strange and eerie sounds came from the depths of a ship. When a man had to be shot at to make him talk. These were some of the elements your Counter Spies faced in our next case. Tune in on Tuesday to Case of the Sweet Steak Murders on Counter Spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York, was directed by William M. Sweet, dramatized by Edward J. Adamson, and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi-Cola. Enjoy some Pepsi, ice cold tonight.